Hi, this is Rochelle at Scrapcraft Tastic, and I'm going to attempt to make a clear A5 cover for these Let's Get Planned inserts. So basically, I'm making my own A5 binder. In a recent video, I made this clear cover to make a handmade journal or junk journal with. So I am going to attempt to use some of the same process to create a ring binder. So I have my ring mechanism. It is an A5 mechanism. It can also hold half letter. These inserts are actually A5 size. I picked these up from Amazon. I'll link to them in the description box below. These are the inserts from Let's Get Planned. I shared them in a previous video when they were unboxed. I'll link to that in the iCard up above if you wanna check that out. I also have here a piece of craft text. We've talked about this before as well. This is the black, it comes in several different colors. This piece is, where's my ruler? Let's use the ruler. This is an old piece, so it's a little beat up, um, but it can still work. It is three and a half by nine and three eighths. So this will be my spine, the outside spine, and I'm going to use some of this black fabric that I recently hauled from Walmart. I'll link to the video in the iCard up above. Um, I'm gonna use some of this for the inside spine. So let's go ahead and tear that piece off now. Uh, I am going to try and get it as straight as possible. So I'm just cutting a little bit there and then tearing down and then I can trim it up as I need as I go. Okay. I'm also going to be using two five mil pieces of laminate and I've already cut down my Duralar, which is this. Duralar is an acetate alternative. This one is 0.005, nine by 12 sheets and it's heat resistant. That's the big thing about it, it's heat resistant. And I know we're gonna have a lot of glare here, but can't be helped at the moment. So I've been wanting to use these flourishing florals from Calva Plan and I thought this would be a good project for it because it's difficult to use these black florals. So I thought this would be a good project for it. And let's see. So I'm gonna have to use these corner florals. Let's see what I can do with those. Oop, this one is already coming up. Yikes, that one has something stuck to it. Okay, so let's try to line these up as straight as I can get them. I'm not going to really worry about trying to get it exactly on the edge because I am going to have some laminate overhang. Let's see. I can make sure I get any air bubbles out, which I probably can't get all of them out. So my idea is to decorate the cover, even though that's crooked, <laughs> to decorate the cover with the stickers. That side's gonna be on the inside and then laminated so this is going to be either the front or back cover and I'm just going to put the sticker down I think doing it this way will limit some of the air bubbles you can't really see air bubbles until you hold it up. Yep, that one still has a few. Just 
smooth this down as much as possible. Sorry if I'm out of frame. Okay, so that one is done. I'm going to set it aside and work on this one. I like to keep the tissue paper because it lets me see the edge a little bit better than just the clear Duralar. This is a cover, this is a cover. I am going to change them up a little bit. It's going to go like that. Let's see what other florals I have. Do I want to put this up top? Do I have any corner florals? Or can I make this a corner piece? All right, so this one is the front, this one is the back. I'm gonna do something different on the back one so that I am sure that it is the back. Let's see. I don't really wanna put any text on here, but I am tempted to do it. Let's see, what do we have? Let's use this. Why does this seem like it should go this way? All right, so I hope I got most of the air bubbles out. I think we're good. All right, so now it is time to laminate these. Hopefully we can that one looks a little suspect up there, but I've done the best that I can. Let's set that aside. And just try to push those out again. So let's grab the laminator. Get it ready. To go it says it's hot and my sh laminating sheets so I'm just gonna slide I'm not gonna worry about keeping leftover laminate for these sheets I just want a nice clean lamination and I'm hoping for the best So I'm putting that under my mat in the hopes that it will stay flat or flatten out. And let's go ahead and laminate this one. So 
take this one out first. I see a few air bubbles. Oh yeah, right there. Oh, I can't really see them until after I laminate, but it can't be helped. All right. So what I'm going to do here is what I normally do when I trim the laminate and I don't want to break the air bubble. I line up the edge of whatever is laminated with the white edge here on the paper trimmer and then trim it. Now, in this instance, I could go all the way to the edge, but I don't want to risk that because it is, if you're laminating one sheet of cardstock or uh, acetate or Duralar, then you can break that bubble. But this one is a little tricky as to whether I should break the bubble because if I break the bubble, there's a chance that the sticker could detach from the Duralar. So I'm not gonna break the bubble. Let's just go ahead and do what I normally do and keep the air bubble intact. So let's just line this up. Okay, so I think that is good. Let's trim the next one. Ooh, that's got a lot of air bubbles. Okay, let's see. This is the front. This is the back. Let's go ahead and round the corners. Going to use the quarter inch rounder and I'm only going to round the outside corners. That'll help me keep my front and back in proper order. Just making sure they are the same size. So this is the back and this is the outside edge. So now that we have those done, I guess we can set that aside and work on the first part of the spine or the binding. Again, this is Craft Text. I'll link to it in the description box below. I'm going to use my scoreboard and my bone folder and I'm going to score this one inch on either side. So, and I think I said this was three and a half. This is three and three quarters. One inch. Turn it around and one inch. Let's get that groove in there. This paper it's tear resistant. It acts like a fabric. You can use it to make things you would make with fabric like tote bags and things like that. Um, it can go through the washing machine. You can actually wash it before you use it. And it'll have like that crinkled look, kind of like a leather, a leathered look. <laughs> but this is straight off the roll with a little age on it. Okay. So these two flaps, the one inch flaps that I just scored will be, I hope that's good and straight. These will be what I use to attach to the laminate. Okay. Maybe I did that wrong on the back. This is the front. All right, I'm gonna punch both sides on the back because now that I look at it, it looks like the flowers are upside down and I might have punched the wrong side. So let's punch this side and then I can figure it out when I get ready to glue it down. So I am going to glue, this is the front make sure I have it on the 
correct orientation. This is the front piece. It's going to go here. So I'm just going to glue this down. Let's see, I'm going to draw a line so that I can line this up properly. And I want to be about a quarter of an inch away from the fold. So there. And there. Let's do the other side too while we're at it. There. So since those two flaps that I scored are one inch, I'm coming in three quarters of an inch to draw my line. And that's going to be my guide to where I want to glue the cover to the craft text. So I'm just kind of penciling that in and it will be covered up. So that'll help me line it up. And you could probably use fabric for this. I just kind of want the craft text or you could use paper too, since the inside will have the uh, fabric. Okay. Let's make sure we got everything on the right side before we glue. So that's going to go like that. Is that too far in? And it's a little bit taller. I think that's good. Let's put the glue down. And I am using Fabri-Tac. I'll link to it in the description box below. And let's try to not be too messy with it. Kind of staying away from the outside edge. Oh, that showed that little piece of paper that was stuck to that. There's nothing I could do about it at this point. So let's line up our piece, center it as best as possible, get it on the line. Press it down. Let's clip it. While the glue sets and do the other side. So this is the front. That doesn't look like it's holding in the center. And then this is the back. So let's do this. Line it up. Let's clip it. And I need to put something heavy on here. Kind of heavy <laughs> to hold it down while the glue sets. So I'm going to give that a few minutes for the glue to set and then we'll be back to work on the rest of the spine. Okay, so we are back. I've been working on the fabric piece while I was away. Hopefully this is set up pretty well. Uh, I'm going to leave the clips on while I continue to work on this. So I think we have a pretty decent size. It's not perfectly straight, but it is straight-ish. All right, so I have some carpet tape here and I did some research because I wanted to be able to make my own fabric tape. And from what I could tell, 
the carpet tape was the best option for making your own fabric tape. Um, so it seems not to work that great with this fabric. So what I think is that it works great for some fabrics, but not all fabrics. But what I am going to do is place this down. I'm going to go ahead and trim off what I need, I think, for this. Uh, I'm going to place it on the spine. Usually I would put it on the fabric. But since I kind of know exactly where I want this to go, I can just put it on the craft text. So I guess I cut both ends crooked. This one is, let's straighten it up. Well, that didn't straighten it. It just made it crooked the other direction. <laughs> okay, let's just put it down. So I'm just gonna put partially on so I've lined it up where I can see where the center is and I'm going to put some of it on the laminate and then let's see if we can get it straight all the way down. And I think it's good to put it on the craft text because it won't pull pieces of the craft text up once it's stuck down okay i got spare laminate pieces let's try and cut this one straight i doubt i'm gonna make it but let's try well that's better okay do the same thing down here And what this is doing it is not only giving me a base to glue the fabric to, it's also helping to hold the laminate pieces in place. And I just picked this up from Home Depot. And I think you can get it on Amazon as well. Okay. So, oh, sticking to my mat. Let's go ahead and take this clips off for the moment and then we can trim this up. I might have to trim that a little bit more. I may have to do a little touching up, up there. Oop, I don't want to fold it yet. <laughs> okay, so yeah, I may have to touch that up a little bit because it's showing, it's not really showing down here, just a little bit. I do have some other scissors I can catch that with. Okay, I think I can fold what's peeking out down a little bit once I pull the backing off. All right, let's make sure all of this is down. Really, really good. Let's get in here where the laminate is. Okay. You could take the fabric. Now, you could actually not have the frayed edges cut it straight uh, I want the frayed edges and I also like that it hangs over a little bit longer now if you look here you can see that this is not torn straight but I'm okay with that too let's see do I want to put this at the top or the bottom either way um, but yeah I like that look so I am going to go with it Let's do it back like I had it in the beginning. Um, well, I don't know. I like this side. Then some of this frayed may peek out. I kind of wanted it to, but it is a little, a little smaller. 
but it's fine. This is this is kind of the things that I like. It's kind of got that junk journal feel, but it's not. So let's go ahead and start placing this down. I'm going to pull up the backing on the tape. Part of the way. And just make sure these fibers are not hanging over the edge. I think they're good. Then I'm going to line this up the way that I want it. Make sure I try to have equal parts hanging over from the top down to the bottom. Line it up. Line it up. And press it down. Let's make sure that it's where we want it. Then carefully pull the tape up. And put down the fabric. Okay. And again, you could use another piece of craft text if you don't want the fabric look. You could use cardstock, whatever you choose. Just need something to cover this inside part. It's just an added layer of security for holding the laminate in place. So there we go. Okay, so this spine. And I do need to tuck this down a little bit up here. And I think also with this fabric, remember I mentioned that it doesn't stick well to this carpet tape. I think what happens is it needs time to cure the, the glue on the tape to adhere to the fabric. So it takes a while. So I kind of want that to fold over like that and I might end up gluing that down. I don't know. Maybe I should have left it even longer. Okay. So that part is done. Let's burnish down the fabric. Let's try not to get wrinkles in it like I just did. Might have to come back with some glue. I think it'll be okay. All right. Now I'm gonna flip it over on this side because I can see and we're going to line this up in the center. Let's put a little mark so we can see where the center is. Let's find the ruler. So if that's the center, that's the center, that's the center, then this is where I need to poke my holes. Okay. Now let's make sure that those marks are in the center. They are. Go ahead and punch the hole. I am going to use my big bite to punch the holes. And I'm going to use the 3 16th hole to do this. It's a little big, but I think I'm going to go ahead and use my white jelly roll to mark this so that I can see it really well once it's under the punch. 
because it's kind of difficult to see. It throws a shadow on it. <clears throat> and I kind of want to line it up as perfectly as I can. There we go. So it punches through the fabric too, but sometimes it gets a little caught. I'll deal with that when I finish. All right. Just gonna take the scissors and trim that off. You got the holes for the rings. Let's go ahead and put the rings on. So we're going to line that up and hope for the best. Why can't I see this? There we go. Okay. So here are my screws and backings. So I got one screw, one back. Let's put the backs through. I'm going to have to add some glue, I think. That's a back, that's a screw, and that's a back. Okay, let's put this on. Whew, lines up, thank goodness. And screw these on. And here, just gonna use my little tweezers to tighten it up, and I'll come back later with the, a real screwdriver. So I think we are good up then. I need to add some glue because I don't know why this doesn't like to stick to this and I'm impatient I don't want to wait so I'm gonna add a little bit of glue stick to help it along the way I don't want to put wet glue because wet glue just seeps through fabric no it's starting to stick on this side but let's help it out some more And I know Fabri-Tac is made for fabric, but I just don't like the effect that it has on fabric. So I don't use it often. Okay, so there we go. Kind of got a big spine, but I want to make sure I had enough space in there. Okay, now for the good part, let's turn it to the right side. So this is the front and this is the back. Let us put in the Let's Get Planned inserts. This is three months or one quarter worth of inserts, including monthlies and weeklies and some um, prompt pages like for budgeting, meal plan, uh, budget meal plan. I think that was it, yes. And then you get the vertical weeklies. And it's on a nice heavyweight cardstock, I think it is. You also get dashboard pages in between. So there's that dashboard page and then here's that one. So it is a little big, how and ever. I feel like once it is filled with maybe top tabs, side tabs, y'all still have good coverage. Um, I could come back and trim it down, but I think, I think it's good the way it is. I just wanted to make sure that I had plenty of space to cover. This is what it looks like with the inserts in it. I still have to decide how I'm going to handle my overhang here. Do I want to come back and put 
the corset ribbon on do you think i should let me know in the comments should we add a closure ribbon or some other type of closure let me know your thoughts we can always come back and work on it some more but for now this is the base this is an a5 diy planner cover using laminate duralar craft text and some fabric along with a ring mechanism and some of this you could probably just do with laminate okay so don't forget to let me know in the comments any finishing touches you would like to see. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any other questions or comments, please leave them below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you may be interested in this other video. Thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.